Okay. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All right, looks like I'm good to go. So, hello everybody. My name is Crow3893, and today I'm going to be showing you guys Nicktoons Battle for, Battle for Volcano Island. So, this game released in 2006 for the PlayStation 2 and Nintendo GameCube. Uh, it is the second game in the Nicktoons Unite series. And the category that I'm going to be showing off today is called No Voiding. So this is essentially like the glitchless category for this game, uh, where we are heavily restricted from not using uh, voiding in this uh, in this um, category, or otherwise known as uh, out of bounds movement. So that like changes the the, the movement a bit more. We're going to be like um, seeing levels a bit differently than we normally would be in any percent run. Uh, but we're still going to be able to do some really cool tricks that are done in most of the levels. So, I'll go ahead and get started real quick. Now it's best to obviously play with a memory card to avoid the auto saving. Alrighty, here we go. So, time's actually going to start when I select continue on this prompt. I would just want to make sure that we are good to go with time. So, just wait a bit. We should be good to go. Okay. So, I'm going to count down from three, and from there, the time will start. So, three, two, one, go. All right, good. I didn't get any lag, so that's, that's a good start. Okay, so a little bit of a description about this game. So, this game um, basically involves with um, the... Uh, there are you see the, you see the crab that right there that just spawned you in. So the what the crab was doing was do that, that in those two cutscenes that I skipped, when besides the in-game cutscene, um, that crab away. and two of the other crab villagers were actually um, summoning the nine chosen ones, who happened to be nine Nicktoon characters. And those characters have to stop the evil Magu from destroying the universe. But the I'm problem with this is that during the like the camp. while they were summoning the nine Mother's characters, the Magu interrupted the the You'll summoning, which ended up causing here. all nine characters to be scattered die, around the island. Again, and what we're currently doing right now is just venturing out and then case. looking for one there more character to include in. But thankfully, with SpongeBob and Danny, they were both next. They both landed right next to each other, so they were able to understand what was going on. And currently right now there's a summoner's rock and this level is basically like a tutorial level where it's just a simple game used to the movement of the game as well as like the controls like attacking, jumping, um, collecting items, stuff like that really. And um, not much is really done or like determined with like time loss or time gain uh, except for one section. You saw that earlier I picked up a coconut. That actually depended on RNG because whenever you hit that a tree they can sometimes drop coconuts, and the coconuts can uh, fall in, in like sometimes different areas. So they'll spawn like path. probably like next to you, uh, in the middle from where you are, or towards like the very like behind like where the tree would be at, which is like the worst basically the worst RNG that you can get. Uh, but other than that, this level there's not much to really like describe about other than it's just holding right and just, uh, avoiding enemies and not to just um. Just not to like fall and like hit the kill, uh, hit the water, like falling into the water to um, mess up any cycles, which is going to happen right here because I'm trying to make sure not to get hit by any of the birds, just so I can be able to make the cycle of not getting hit by this specific fish right here. And there we go. So, uh, this, so even though this level is not really um, like that, like too flashy, uh, the next one is a bit more of like an of an interesting one, and the ones afterwards as well will be more interesting to try out, especially with the tricks that are um, done with it. So again, we're just gonna make it to the end right here, and past this brief haste is gonna be a cutscene. up ahead. It looks like. Pat? <laughs> Alright, so yeah, we finished uh, Summoner's Rock, and we met up with Patrick, and now we're just going to continue onwards to the shipwreck to reach the campsite. Now, the first thing I'm going to be doing is to actually jump on uh, climbing up here with Spongebob, and when you climb up at, like, a, at, at, an, uh, at an angle, Spongebob will be able to climb up a bit more faster while jumping. Like as you saw right there, because I was climbing up left and up right, it was, it was easier and, what well not really easier, but like a bit 
more faster to go up rather than just um, like holding up. And I'm just like being very cautious right here not to get hit by the birds, but also being sure not to fall in because I'll lose some time. And I'm going to go for a cool little skip that's coming up very soon to uh, save some time on some platforming, but also to make a cycle if I get it quick enough. So I got to focus real quick. Nice, got it first try, that's good. So right there, right there, was I was able to jump on the uh, um, the wall right there because this collision is still intact. And doing this was able to prevent me from uh, doing some, from walking more to some excess platforms and knocking down some bridges. So that saves a, like a good amount of time, honestly, than you normally would. And a cool thing right here, because there's no kill planes, like I could just fall down here, saving a bit more time with some walking like and like some, uh, just like some extra time just for the walking, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to intentionally avoid um, go, uh, knocking down this bridge to not uh, load in these birds that will be on these platforms. And so I can make it to this cycle to consistently make it and pull down the lever really fast. But right here, I'm actually going to hit the trigger with the birds. So you can see the birds are right there. And boom, there they are. So again, like there's not really much like that's happening, like other than like the little skip I did. This is just basically required with tight movement, making sure to like just to get some simple jumps food? and making I'm sure to just okay. get the cycles Thanks as quickly as I can or as like as safely spray? as I can. So just right there, I was able to jump on the gear, which it made my height a little bit more, which which actually made me um go up a little bit more higher than uh, being on the platform, which was able to just make me like go there a bit more quickly just for that extra time save. And I, mean, I have to be careful not to get hit by these birds, because if you end up getting hit, you're basically gonna be like, uh, like, you're not, you don't have like any, you're locked on your movement, so you can't really move, you can't like register any input. And this normally happens when you do like a double jump when it happens, but if you get a single jump, you can sometimes jump out of it and get like a little momentum boost from it, which is pretty cool. Anyway, so I'm gonna knock down the chandelier, and during its animation while it's rising back up from the water, I'm gonna do a quick little walk back and hit this yellow crystal to get four yellow energies. And the yellow energies in this game are going to be very useful. So there are two different types. There's blue energy and there's yellow energy. Blue energy basically heals you up. Yellow energy gives you the ability to use like a special attack, which each character has. And most of them are projectiles. Like SpongeBob and Danny's are a projectile. But uh, like um, different characters like have like different uh, types of like, special attacks, and I'll go more into the explanation about that in the next level. So like right here, we're just gonna be dealing with some uh, birds to save Tucker because he has to deal with them. Now they're on three cycles, and this is the second phase. And when they're actually off screen like that, I can just make sure that like they're off screen when they're like um, flip, like when they're in an animation when like they flip backwards. And doing this will immediately make them despawn, just saving a little bit of time right there. And another thing I'm doing is that after I'm on the results screen, I'm not mashing my A button because if I were to mash on the A button, it would cause the game to lag and make the load at least twice as long. Lag is an issue with this game, especially on uh, on console because as mentioned, I'm on GameCube, but it can it can lag by quite a bit, and I actually, uh, unfortunately had some lag during Shipwreck Cliff. No time to lose. All right, good. Didn't get any lag right there, so that's nice. So I'm going to actually explain about what I'm going to be doing in this level because this level is going to be really short and you'll see why. So I'm going to do a little trick. Um, I mentioned earlier how like characters have different special attacks. So Patrick has a cartwheel attack for his special attack. And what's pretty cool about that is that we can actually cancel the animation. And by canceling it, by canceling it like as soon as we, um, right as soon as we activate it, we get our double jumps back. So it's basically like a quadruple jump. So I'm going to just position myself right here. And by doing that, I was able to just go from the beginning of the level to the end. Because that level is like is like wrapped around where it's like one giant circle. So I gotta just focus real quick for some lag right here. I gotta look for an audio cue. There are many dangers on There are many dangers on our island. You must there are many dangers on our island. You must nice, I got rid of the lag. I know where to so find what I did there was a waste. trick called Z I menu. Um what, what I did friend. there was because um by activating the, by opening the rewards menu at a certain point in that, um, 
in like a certain spot during that area, it gets rid of like excess lag, which would have costed quite a bit of time because kind of the level itself crab really crab did crab not crab just want to load in. And it can sometimes be an issue. Sometimes you don't really get it a lot during um, console, but it doesn't really happen in the emulator. You just have to be a bit more cautious with it. It's unknown if this really happens on PS2, because uh, most of the runs done on GameCube uh, really have this issue, or just on console itself. Now, during these levels, we are meeting up with like um, with like other of the chosen ones, which are heroes. So, like um, at the end of Shipwreck Cliff, we met up with um, we were able to save Tucker from Danny Phantom, and then at the end of Calamity Cove, we actually met up with Squidward and Samantha Manson. And now, right here, we're actually looking for a three-headed boy. But real quick, I'm gonna go for a cool little jump here. Nice! I got turtle jump. That's awesome. So. By walking off that uh, the turtle at a certain time and doing two double jumps, uh, I'm actually able to just um, to, like not drown and land on the uh, platform a bit earlier. In case I didn't, I would have only lost like four seconds. But that's really cool because that trick can be like a bit tough. You have to get like the right time from when you're gonna walk off of the uh, of the turtle in order to land in, in the next area. Now from this point, this is where normally. Um, where no voiding comes to difference from any percent because in any percent you would do an out of bounds in this level and oh I just got a checkpoint warp that's pretty cool got that first try that was really nice um, so any percent doesn't do what I'm currently doing right now uh, and currently right now with no voiding so in any percent you would do an out of bounds during like the like a previous section um, and you'll be able to just skip into the, the very end because the way out of balance can work is you'll have full movement and you'll be able to like get transported to the end, um, like much quicker in certain levels or like as far as you can without without it being soft block. So it saves like so like the out of balance. I'm not sure how much it saves in this level, but it's well over 20 seconds, which is pretty interesting because it saves all it, it avoids all this uh, this area. Slam jump that pad. So right here, I'm just gonna go not down this bridge. We're gonna save Timmy Turner after that cutscene play. And right here, I'm gonna swap to Danny. And I'm intentionally doing this to prevent a crab from uh, loading in. And I'm gonna do a little trick here called Danny Jump. So um, I'm gonna use the property of Danny's height because whenever you jump on top of a character, it, it's, their heads are big enough to be read as a platform and it resets our jumps. So basically, I can also do that to get a little bit of an extended height. So for example, right here with Sam, I was able to also get an extended high right there, and doing both of those jumps, uh, doing both of those uh, like character jumps, was able to let me skip some excess climbing that was that's normally required. There is a way to basically like manipulate it. It's, it's probably uh, really difficult to get. So right here, we're supposed to like stop these crabs because they're preventing us from leaving. But uh, because Patrick Carbill is so overpowered, you can easily one-hit them. But it's very tough because they'll um, they ha it's RNG of whether, whether they'll spawn um, yellow energy or blue energy. And so far, my RNG is going good so far. So far. Nice. So we were able to save Timmy Turner from from uh, from all of the um, from the crabs, and we also collected a Jimmy Neutron communicator. But unfortunately, we were, we we're not able to use it because really batteries not included, sure. like most of the accessories that you would get. Um, so right here, we're currently just going to have to deal with the Great Carapace, and this is mainly the first boss of the game. So the Great Carapace, what ends up happening is that the, the little crab that we were talking to was informing us about the one, uh, the sand monster who has risen and, and wanted to attack and destroy the crab village, uh, villagers. And during this, the the great carapace ends up eating the uh, the wise old crab, and now we have to stop him. But the way to stop him is to break the shield that's right behind him, like that's blocking his back. And we have to lure him into the waterfall. But I have to be very careful with how I'm doing the hit. So I'm actually hitting the shield two times and then hitting his face. Because if I were to um, hit his face three times, he'll, he'll go close. And if I don't end up hitting his face, he'll still move closely. So this is just to prevent him from moving while I'm destroying the shield. And now that the shield is destroyed, I'm just going to continue mash. He's going to mash it. And then he's going to be knocked back into the water. And then we, um, we then saved the wise old crab. And then we were able to talk to Jimmy Neutron. And now what we're currently doing is we're going to be roaming around to find one more hero. But Chosen also because ones. we have Only to look for some parts to create to a rib zipper that will be that will be powerful enough to to um, um to stop the Magu for good. But what what uh what we first have to do here is 
um, look for the deep sea scroll, which is uh, the last hero that we have to look for. And you probably know who it is just based off the title. Ah, dang it! I got three at yellow energy. Normally you can get four, but I guess I didn't time my movement with it. So right here, I'm just gonna switch to Timmy, and I'm gonna be performing a Timmy jump. So, Timmy's special attack, when used in the air, gives him a slight height boost. Like gives him like a slight, like uh, like a little bit of an extra height. And we're gonna we can abuse this with a double jump. So it's essentially more like a two and a half jump. It's it's not like a full jump, but like more like a two and a half in my opinion. And we're able to go a little bit more higher and we can just like certain uh, segments, like for this this part right here. Oh, I got it! I just fell. Dang it! All right, I gotta redo this real quick. Nice, got it. Second try. That was close. All right, and then right here, I'm gonna switch to Spider Dog to get more yellow energy. I accidentally used my my, uh, my first one, so I'm gonna collect another one on the way over to the second platform. So in any percent, you can go out of bounds in the beginning of the of this level, but um, of course because there's no voiding, we can't do that. So it's not so we are prohibited from doing it. And it's because that out of bounds is actually the, like one of the hardest ones in this level. Uh, well, in this game, uh, but it's also because it's pretty boring as well. It's like three minutes of going out of bounds. So it's not really like the best one. It's more tough because you have to actually pay attention for your uh, for your movements for it. But it kind of makes it worth it because it saves over 45 seconds, or like uh, at most 40 seconds, then uh, not going out of bounds. So it makes this level a little bit more shorter. But at the same time, um, this level is still pretty flashy um, without the out of bounds, which makes it more like preferred in my opinion. So right here is going to progress onwards, just jumping on these trampolines in the air. Uh, right there was actually a salvage item, but this isn't all salvage items, so I don't have to collect any of them. And you're normally supposed to pick up that rock, kind of like how you would in the beginning, but like I did uh, a Timmy jump over the uh, the crystal wall. Oh, Whoa, on here you can just jump really around old. it, really. <laughs> it's kind of funny that you can easily do that. Watch and then right here as well, you have to break down the wall, you can just barely go through it. But I have to be very cautious not to get hit by the crystal scorpion that's right there, as well as the other one right there. Um, so, again, there are like, many enemies that we have to be very cautious to not deal with in uh, the speedrun because we can sometimes lose time, uh, especially like right here, um, not being able to make certain cycles depending on like our movements and when we're able to like hit like the triggers to load them in. And then right here, I'm just gonna wait patiently for this one to go in just for safety, and I'm gonna jump on these crystals to get, not get hit by the dog right there. Uh, in the meantime, I want to give a quick little fun fact about this level itself. So, this is the only level where we can play as Timmy. That's unfortunate, really. It's kind of unfortunate. So right there, um, I was able to just jump down right, and doing so, it will actually register his movement still during the cutscene, which is really nice. And right here comes a puzzle section, which is the hardest puzzle in existence. Slam so jumping on two buttons. So difficult. So yeah, right from here, we're just gonna continue onwards, and it's just gonna be like, this is gonna be like mostly like, um, like being around the corners just to not lose like any time, like or like just like some time to movement really. But at the same time, it's gonna be kind of cool. And then right here, I'm gonna perform a Timmy jump to go across this crystal, uh, this crystal wall. You you know you can actually just jump around it like um it's it's normally like done to be jumped around with um in SpongeBob only because there, uh, the corners of the of the uh, like the edges are still um, intact and available, but be, but it's much faster to just do a Timmy jump and a bit faster than just breaking it. And right there, I had to be very cautious because the uh, the platform was already sticking out, and if I tried to jump, I would uh, infin uh, I would like still be uh, not making contact with it, and I had to wait a cycle. So at that point, it's just not worth it. And then right there, that door, the third um, face that would be sticking out, that's random for when that one comes out. And because I got lucky with it, I'm on this cycle, so I gotta be quick right here with my jumps. And by doing this, I'm able to save like a little bit more time from that, which is really nice. Now, this is normally where you would be at at the end, like during the, end, the ending percent run, you will land back and bounce around this area. Because the later part of the section, if you if you don't uh, go past a certain trigger, like you still hit a certain point, which is right here. If you don't go in between the uh, the crystal wall and the uh, the crystal pillar, you will be soft locked, and you have you have to hit it because if you don't, um, you will you'll know when you don't activate that cutscene right there. So that cutscene basically signified us from meeting, from uh, knowing that the last hero is nearby. But real quick, we're trying to get for a strat here. 
Dang it, I didn't get it. Alright, I tried, but uh, I was trying to go for a Timmy jump to despawn these, uh, the dog monsters from spawning in. But that unfortunately didn't happen. But that's the end of Crystal Ruins, and we were able to meet up with the Deep Sea Squirrel, which is Sandy Cheeks. So now that we have all the characters unlocked, we're currently now going to have to also like still look for more of the items for the Rip Zipper. But the problem with this is that the Wise Old Crowd told us that we need to uh, help him immediately because um, there's an issue with the Florians. And we, uh, they kept, they've held captive because they, they, they took control of, and like they, um, they took possession of the Queen this of the Mermix after, uh, after being mind controlled worry, by the Magus Goose. <laughs> and because of this, we had to be very cautious with them. Uh, making sure like not to fall in and because if we do we'll be respawned but yeah um this area is not is really messed up um because of like all the magus everywhere and because of this they're all all the florians are being mind controlled now right here there is an out of bounds that you can do but of course because there's no voiding uh we can't do that so right here just gonna just um just do like some jumping around like, past some areas as quickly as you can then we're in this little mine section, and then I'm gonna do a little. Okay, I tried to do a little manipulation to cause the uh, the Florian to throw the, his projectile in a different direction, so I wouldn't get hit with it. Because when you do, you're stuck, and then the only way to get out is by like mash. Uh, like, I don't really know like where it is, so I normally just move my analog stick in a direct. Like I just constantly move it while I'm also jumping, just to see like which one it is. I'm not really sure which one, but I just do both just to see if it works out. And thankfully, it does. So I'm gonna go for a full scratch here, where I can actually jump on the previous, on the next area a bit earlier and make it to the next platform. So I'm gonna see if I can go for it. Oh, I was close. I was so close. Okay. So unfortunately, we just have to wait a bit here. This, this is mainly like why it's worth the time save because it's it, this part is really slow. And then let's see. All right, good. I didn't hit the cutscene. Not really sure where the cutscene trigger is for that, but sometimes I hit it, but sometimes I won't. Giant but yeah. Blades. So we're near the end of the level. We just have to go upwards from this point. And from here, I'm just going to hey, avoid these blades and then cooker. break down this Make pressure cooker. There was another one that was in the area earlier, but I didn't actually have to break it down. I could just jump on it and I could just go through without having to break it. Um, and so I'm not really sure if it does save time, but I just like to go for it because it's a really good cool strat. So again, just gonna do some quick platforming because this is an action adventure, uh, an action adventure platformer after all. <laughs> and avoid safe, land on on the uh, platform above in case I wasn't gonna be able to make it. And then I'm gonna pick up this speed boost, and doing this will be able to let me go a bit more far, uh, faster. And and then I'm just gonna do one more pressure cooker over here. Gonna do a jump because um, when you jump out and jump back into wind, it you actually fly up a little bit more higher. So like the momentum is stored in. And it's really useful, um, so it's really cool. And then we do a quick climb, but then again with SpongeBob being able to climb really uh, quickly, we're able to just do that. And okay, I'm gonna collect some yellow energy because I'm gonna be using Patrick. So during this point, we capture, we now met up with the Queen Mermic, and we're gonna save her. But we had to deal with the Florians, and then eventually the the, the Florian Sergeant or the King Gorgeous Sergeant, which who is on top right there. And we're gonna find him after we're done with the enemies. In the meantime, we're gonna do some wheeling. And I'm gonna see if I can go for a cool strat right here. So by manipulating um, the, the the enemy's movement, I, I could have been able to destroy both of them at the same time, but unfortunately I wasn't able to. So right here we're dealing with the uh, the King Gorgeous Sergeant, and the way to easily eliminate him is that we have to get him off the edge. But we can do this by just doing a ground pound. And then by doing this, I'm gonna let you guys enjoy this cutscene because it's pretty funny. The chosen ones, then the legends are true. I should have believed Shelly all along. Shelly? Guys, there's an aqueous thermal diffuser not far away. We need that for the rip zipper. Look, it's over there. Wow, it's beautiful. Dude, it's an espresso machine. Dude, it's an espresso machine. <laughs> I like to do that funny cutoff. It's, it's, it's kind of funny in my opinion. It's really cool. So yeah, now we save the Queen Mermic, when you are and ready, we are going to go stop King me. Gorge, who is the second boss in this game. And what we're currently doing is that we are going to defeat um, King Gorge, and this is done by the Queen Mermic's um, commandos, 
being on top of a dam. So we're in this level draw called Dry Canyon Dam. And what we're currently doing is we're trying to um, free the King Gorge from being mind controlled by the Magus Ooze. And by doing this, um, the com we're distracting him while the commandos are going to break down the dam to completely flood him with water and keep him free um, from the Magus um, mind control. So right here, where he's going to spawn out like three vines, and on the fifth one, after the five times, um, is the one that we get to attack. And then we have to wait for the third one, and then after the third one, we're going to be attacking him. So I'm playing as Sandy because it's a bit more, uh, it's more easier to hit um, the, the these um, the vines as well as King Gorge a bit more accurately with Sandy or SpongeBob, but just for safety and like because it's more easier, I'm gonna play as Sandy. Now the first thing right here is that his hitbox is completely displaced, so it's a bit difficult to hit him. But after the cutscene, his uh, model is gonna be a bit smaller, and because of this, I could just mash the attack button, and I'm able to easily just hit him. And now we're gonna be into uh, into the second phase. So we're just going to wait for him because he's going to do a quick little laugh and then he's going to shoot out some Magu Ooze and then we're going to be avoiding it right here. And after this one, I'm going to I'm gonna just position myself in the middle and not do any movement because this will probably cause him to... Okay, that didn't happen. Never mind. Uh, okay, there we go. So that ca that would cause the, uh, the vine to spawn out. I think that was because I got hit with the... Um, that was probably because I got hit with the... Um, uh, with the um, ooze. So I'm going to try it again. I'm just going to wait here. I'm not really sure if this is like a manipulation, but I normally like to like do it in the center because I, I feel like that will like easily make him like um, like um, um, do the spitting as well as um, like bringing down the vines. Two, three, four, five. Okay, and then... And then position in the middle again. Wait for it. Alright, so this is the last one. And I think I should get the speed boost right here. Yep, there it is. And I'm gonna just not move. Alright, good. So, this phase is gonna be a little bit more um, scary because um, King Gorge is actually gonna be using like some fire, or like uh, essentially like some Magu flame, as I like to call it, to um, try and attack us, really. But this is gonna be difficult because at first the hitbox is again displaced. Oh, thank. Okay, good. Sometimes you can get knocked back from it, but thankfully that didn't happen for me. But unfortunately, it can happen right here with the with the fire. Wow, that was a good King Gorge. That was really good. I'm gonna probably retime that. Maybe that's an IRL uh, PV. But that was cool. So yeah, we were able to save King Gorge, and we were able to collect the last um the last required item for the uh, Rip Zipper. But first, I need to wait for Tucker's Zipper's line. Done. Okay. Guys, so because I activated, um, or like I, I used an input like by within the first frame that I loaded in, that basically caused Tucker's um, voice line to lag. So I should have probably waited while it happened. But in the meantime, here we are going to be entering the volcano. Yeah, and right off the bat, I'm going to immediately switch to so Sam. Cloth. And we're going here because we have to lure, careful, so, so that way we can get close to Magu. But we have to just go around this entire um, volcano, which has to deal with all the Magu zoos and all the Magu monsters. And right off the bat, you see that, I'm, uh, that I have Sam in this suit. So she has the ability to use the Fenton suit in certain parts of levels. Um, that lasts for 15 seconds, which lets her shoot chamber. like infinite, um, like, like infinite, like plasma, um, like plasma projectiles, as I like to call it, and it's pretty cool, honestly. And uh, so right here, we're just gonna progress onwards. But soon, I'm gonna switch to SpongeBob because I'm gonna use SpongeBob later on uh, for the rest of this level, just just because of his attacks, because they're a bit more easier. And right there, um, if I did actually do a throw of the rock, it would have auto-targeted the Maga monster. So I positioned myself slightly behind the rock to make sure that it destroyed the rock. And thankfully, I didn't end up falling down because of it. You can sometimes fall down from it, but if you're lucky, you can sometimes just get a simple, like, little hit from it, which thankfully happened for me. And then right here, I don't have to destroy the crystal walls, you can just easily go around them, which is pretty funny, honestly. And uh, right here, I'm going to jump and hit the trigger, which will spawn the Magu monster right here, which I want to deal with it. And this part is going to be go uh, also funny, even though I can jump around it. Some of its platforming is also available right there, and I'm able to just jump around, and then I don't have to destroy this enemy, and I'm going to climb up, flying up here. So, a little fun fact about this Look level. This is the level where you can easily go out of bounds, and I am not kidding. You can easily go out of bounds in this level. Uh, I'll showcase it if I have time at the end of the run. 
if I have some time left, I will. I definitely want to show it off because it's really hilarious just how easy that you can do this. And it's done in any percent, and we it lets us be uh, skip all of this. So it skips. Uh, lets us skip from uh, this point to the very end of the level. Um, but uh, granted, we have to be very cautious with it because if we don't, we would end up getting soft locked. But there is like a safety like um, there's like a safety way to do it. So yeah, from here, it's gonna progress onwards. And I'm doing these jumps, um, not because like jumping is like fast in this game, but it's actually because like sometimes you can get stuck in between like two edges of, of uh, like the floor. And um, I'm just doing that just to prevent it because it'll uh, cost up any time. And uh, like it normally happens to me sometimes, unfortunately. Um, it, it, it's something like that I don't want to deal with. So I just start doing it and thankfully I have not dealt with the issue. Um, not, not as much as I used to. So we're gonna tie these jumps to land on these moving platforms. All right. I tried going for a cool little jump where you can actually jump on top of the crystal. You can land on it, and it'll like it will just save a small amount of time. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to. So right here, we're just gonna be in a little combating section, and then right here, I'm just gonna destroy the uh, the funeral for the. To spawn in the rest of the Umaga monsters just so we can uh, eliminate these ones first. And I'm going to be using a special attack and a full attack because these will automatically kill them. And so that way they won't end up throwing their projectiles because the projectiles are a bit, are really annoying because these enemies can either um, like punch you when they're close to you or when they're um, like far away from you, they will throw a projectile. And the issue with that is because in, in normal, it can easily target you depending on your movement. So it's kind of like dealing with Chuck in SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, where it registers your input like the first frame, like you would do like a movement. And uh, I'd have to try my best to manipulate it to make sure that it doesn't uh, hit me while I'm doing my angles. Unfortunately, it would cost some time, but at the same time, it's a bit, it's just more safer, honestly. So right here, I mentioned about like how you can sometimes get stuck in between like floorings, and I'm using the, I'm abusing that property so I can easily destroy those um those dog monsters much quicker. Cause normally after you hit them, they're supposed to be like rolling around like uh, randomly, but because like I was in the flooring of it, I, I was able to make them just this. stay in that same spot, more which like is really those cool, ruins we found and in the helps save a little bit of time. And right here, we're just gonna this is a, this section is a bit of a pain. That you have to avoid, to make sure not to get hit by the, the cylinder things. I'm not really sure what they are, because once you hit them, you immediately fall down, and if uh, you, and like the cycle is always random for each of the ones on top. Now, one of the issues is that you can You're actually sometimes there, uh, not be able to get on top, and like if you get a bad one. Unfortunately, that has happened to me in a 100% run, and I lost like over two and a half minutes from it, which was pretty unfortunate. So let's see if I get a good one for this one. Because this one sometimes does not like to cooperate. Okay. Alright, we're good. We got a good one. Oh, this this is a gold. This is it, wow, this is going to be a, good, a big gold. And we've made it. Wow. Yeah! Dang, that golded by quite a lot. Hold on, I want to see how much that golded by. That golded by 10 seconds. That's, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, so... We are currently now going to be entering the final level, which is the Summit Storm, which, and we have to stop the Magu, which is by luring him closer to the Rip Zipper. And right off the bat here, there's a combat section, but by doing the Danny Head Jump method, um, I'm able to easily just hit like the, the cutscene trigger, which will immediately like let me skip like 30 seconds of combat with um, the Magu monsters. So it's really nice for that. It saves quite a bit of time. The, there's not really like a way, there is sort of a bit of a way to manipulate Danny to get closer, but um, it's much more easier to just character swap, but it's just depending because like when uh, characters, whenever you like um, are facing towards a one of your um, allies, they will immediately move away just so that way you won't try and do like um, tricks because that's how like the devs were like intending it from happening. But we still find our ways to do around it because uh, this doesn't happen whenever you try jumping on top of them, which is very useful when it comes to doing like the jumps from Danny and Sam. And right here, I'm just going to wait patiently for right here so I won't... Dang it. Okay, so that Magu monster got me. I'm going to hit it just for safety. Knock it down. And I'm going to jump right here. And if I'm lucky... Okay, good. I made it through. All right. And then there's going to be one more Magu monster down here that's going to draw a projectile. And I'm going to do a quick jump by doing that so I won't get hit and knock down. 
because again, as mentioned, like they their, their projectiles, they throw them within like the first few frames of uh, like one of your last registered inputs, so it can like easily like auto target you every time. Uh, especially with this section, which is unfortunate with this level itself because they're all over this level. As you can see, like there's two of them right there along with the two dog monsters. And then there's going to be like um, two more after this part right here. And if I end up getting hit and fall, I will be spawned all the way back to, this, to the beginning of this part right here. So I'm going to try and manipulate it right there. Got the manipulation. I'm going to wait for the second one. Okay, good. That one auto-targeted Danny. And then now I'm in this record segment. So these records... Um, you can sometimes get stuck inside of them, and they'll still they'll deal you damage, or you'll be um, like um, you like have prevention from being able to move, and it's really unfortunate. Thankfully, some of these records are on like consistent cycles, like this one right here, as well as the one on top is on a cycle, that, like on the set cycle, and this one as well is on like a different one, which I was able to get past through. Another thing is that there's also an invisible um, platform right there. We don't know why, but yeah. Also, that's an um, example of what happens with the records if you make contact with it. Then I'm going to jump on this platform, and then we're going to go um, dealing with like another combat section with the Magu, where he's going to spawn in some dogs, but I'm going to try and go for the skip for it. It's a little bit difficult to get, because um, you have to like get it at the right angle, as well as getting your jumps timed correctly to make sure you hit the trigger. So I'm going to give it a try real quick. So normally he spawns in two, but by positioning myself in a certain spot, uh, I, I would get hit by the projectile spawning in one of them. So now only one dog will spawn in, just I wanted to deal with his hassling. And right here, I'm gonna just do a quick slam right here. Oh, I got it! Oh, that is so cool. I've been struggling with that trick a lot. I got that first try. Wow. That is, that's insane. That is pretty cool, honestly. Man, so far this Summit Storm is really good. Well, besides that, but that's really nice. And then right here, there are normally supposed to be like two walls you have to um, break down, but I can just jump around them. And if I'm not careful, I will end up falling back uh, like a little bit out of balance and be clipped in on the floor. But thankfully, I was able to just maneuver myself around it. And then right there was another form of the manipulation to make sure not to get hit by the projectile of the Magu monster. And right here as well. As you can see, I immediately like um, turned, but then I turned back. Uh, okay, good. I didn't get hit. And there's like these um, these like things that push, that like fall down, or, like fall down and push you, or like just like um, like fall on the floor. If you end up uh, one simple hit from these, will immediately kill you, and you'll be checkpointed from like an earlier segment. So I had to play it safe. Thankfully, the Magu monster right here did not uh, got killed, and, and it couldn't throw its projectile at me. But this one, I had to wait a little bit. There we go. Okay. Alright, let's see. Okay, good. I did not get hit. I'm gonna see if I can make this one right here. Nice. So normally you're supposed to break down like a bunch of doors, but if you time your jumps, you can easily just go around the walls because they don't have like most of their um, collision in, uh, intact. Now right here, we are currently going to fight the Magu, and we're going to do this by defeating him so that way he's weakened to the point where we can easily lure him into the Rip Zipper. So right here, we have to hit him a certain amount of time. And from here, he's gonna just be throwing his projectiles at us. And when he does it, I have to wait a bit because if I don't, I will just get like I will fall off of the uh, off of the um, off of the weapon right here. So again, just hitting him a bunch of times right here. And then once he does that, and he's gonna go down here and shoot out some flames. And during this, I'm gonna probably heal up just for safety. Well, actually, no, I, I won't do that because I, I think I'll be okay. Healthy. Okay, yeah, my health will be okay. So during this, I'm just gonna enter back in here and then continue attacking him. Alright, and he's going to do like this animation where he does like a, uh, a slam. And once he does the slam, I'm going to immediately get out and jump. Ah, oh, dang it, because sometimes you won't get like knocked back by it, but unfortunately I think I did it too early. Alright, so time is going to be coming up very soon actually. So it comes up with the, when the Magu, uh, when the screen fades to black and the final cutscene plays. So get ready on time. Time! Nice. That is awesome. That was a 36.53 on my end. That's insanely good, honestly. All my time I've done... Pr oh, wow, and I got a gold as well. Uh, I golded by 18 seconds that segment. Wow, that is, that is honestly really nice. I'm o That was only 14 seconds behind my PB. <laughs> that is pretty cool, despite the amount... Of this probably would have been a PB. Well, actually, yeah, probably. 
Well, actually, no, never mind. I probably wouldn't have. But that is really nice. That is awesome. So yeah, now we stopped the Magu. We were able to save the 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 crabs and like the Mermaid Queen as well. And we're currently now being transported back into our home worlds. And here's a cool little reference right here at the end. Alright, so since I have a bit more time, because uh, this run ended a bit earlier than I expected, I want to show you guys off and out of bounds that uh, we can easily do. Uh, let me just go ahead and just open up. Let me load up my save file real quick. Well, at least I hope it's still on here. I, I hope it is. I don't think it is. I'm kind of scared, honestly. Okay, it's not on this memory card, unfortunately. Um, okay, let me see if I can open it up on the emulator, because it's really funny to do it. Uh, okay, well, that's kind of unfortunate. Let me see if I can just boot it up real quick. Because it's, it's so funny that we can be able to just go out of bounds that easily. Let me just open up the emulator. Uh, okay, this is probably not good. <laughs> well, I guess that's kind of unfortunate. I should have saved that file, but I guess I wasn't able to. I, I can't, so unfortunately I wasn't able to show off the out of bounds. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, I'll just give some shout outs in the meantime. Um, Big shout out to Nicktoons community. Want to give a big thank you to Hydro and DBP for giving me um, like advice and as well as help on doing many of the tricks um, done in the uh, done in the um, uh, in the speed runs, such as like the glitches and all of that. Uh, but I, actually, I will show off one out of bounds because I, I'll show yeah I'll show off the Summoner's Rock out of bounds. So this one isn't really that too useful. But it's but this will be like the easiest way to show off like how out of bounds can work in this game. This one is like a little bit easy, but it's like put, done with a precise jump. So I'll try and show it off real quick. Unfortunately, I couldn't show there off the one in HP, but but um, to give a description of how that one was supposed to work, um, yeah. after the cutscene, um, like where I mentioned, I would continue to bump playing as SpongeBob. Away. You can easily walk down from it, and what happens afterwards is that you would immediately energy. be able to just walk out of bounds because there's no kill plane, there's no like uh, ooze that's preventing you from moving. So with that, you're able to just easily do it. All right, so I'm gonna try and go for the out of bounds right here. I'm gonna do a Danny jump just for safety. Sure to collect them all. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so this is how an out of bounds works in this game. So you just like maneuver around and you're falling like from you fall continuously and then look you go from the very top and we're able to just land. I'm gonna see if I can land. I'm gonna hope I hope I can. Nice. That was able to do it. Open that case. Um, so yeah, unfortunately that wasn't the out of bounds I was playing to show off, but hey, at least like, I was able to show one off from this game. Um, so yeah, that was, that's it with this game. Um, this speedrun is pretty cool. If you want to get into this game, you can try out no voiding, or if you want to try out the cool out of bounds movement or glitches, you can try out any percent as well. Um, but other than that, um, again, big thank you to the Nicktoon speedrunning community. Big thank you to DBP and Hydro for helping me like um, learn this game as well as just being able to like get consistent with the movement.